The Industrial Age came about at the start of the 20th century, really driven by three technologies, the petrol-powered car, telephones, and electricity. And these three technologies helped redefine our industries and ultimately our societies. Today, as we step into an information age driven by exponential technologies, we have some different technology platforms like artificial intelligence and robotics and synthetic biology and renewables. And all of these, like their precursors, are going to change the way in which we work, we live, how we interact with our states and our governments. The rationale for thinking about monopoly or market power that existed in the industrial age is very, very different in the information age. Whether it's our smartphones or it's the internet services that sit behind them, we can't really do anything without those technologies, even if we're as powerful as governments. And the trouble is that there are only a few companies who really control those infrastructures. They use their profits to build their cash reserves, to buy the best talent, and they start to suck up and hoover up the data in domains where they don't currently operate, making themselves more of an essential part of how we interface with the world. So that is the biggest challenge as we move into the digital society, to understand how we put controls around that power, how we benefit from the innovations of the core technologies, and how we ensure that we get this technology back to being responsible to the people who make up our societies. It's important for us to recognise that these companies are now accumulating power at a scale that will at some point make it difficult for national governments to have any fine-grained tools to deal with them. We still have those tools, so we need to act now. Technology is coexistent with the human process. It is part of the way in which we have built our culture over thousands and tens of thousands of years. And so we can't allow it to exist over there on the west coast of the United States, where that we then become takers. So we have to break that narrative. In the second instance, what we have to challenge is challenge the idea that innovation is the only thing that you need. What we actually have to do is go back to that issue of humanity, human values, what do our people need? Our data trails are like little bits of oxygen that could be collectively tremendously valuable in a digital society, but right now what we do is we don't share them broadly and we give them to one or two companies for what is probably a reasonable trade, the free email, the free internet service and you know, social network, but we lose this collective benefit that we could get if we could somehow think about it in a different way. In this digital society, it's the most marginalized who are often excluded by these data-driven systems. And the reason that is happening is because we've got a set of rules that were designed for a world of oil refineries and cars rolling off a production line and racing down a freeway. If we want to build a more equitable digital future, we need to start by understanding what a more equitable future would look like. What does that mean in our culture? What are the measures we would use to see whether we were getting there? What is the big vision for what equity and justice means in our societies?